Hi, my name is Jacob Adams. I'm a fitness and leadership coach and I help people just like you achieve more, get more. And I'm here with Rebecca. Rebecca. And so Rebecca, what do you do? What's your, what do you do with, how do you help people? What's your main way? Through art and makeup and beauty. Awesome, yes. awesome. And you know, the question is, we were talking, me and Rebecca have been talking back and forth through text, through phone for a few, few months. And uh, you know, have you ever struggled with insecurities in a romantic relationship? Insecurities in a romantic relationship. Maybe you're je a little too jealous and you know you shouldn't be. Maybe you're too controlling and you know you wish you weren't as controlling. Or maybe you're just controlling enough. Who knows? How do you set these boundaries? I know I struggle with that, Be Becca. Have you struggled with these things at all, Becca? Oh, definitely. Now, and obviously we don't know, we haven't really talked to what degree, right? This will be our first time actually. We're getting it out. And getting it out there. <laughs> and it came to me because, you know, I've ta I was talking to Becca, I was talking to one of my friends calls me today and she says, oh, Jacob, you know, this is, I'm finally over this relationship. And I'm like, you know, sometimes we need years to really get over somebody. I heard one time that it takes half the time that you were with the person to actually get over them. So say we were with someone for four years, it actually takes the full two years to actually just be done. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. Have you ever been with somebody and you wanted to get out, you wanted to get out of a relationship and you kept going back time and time? Has that ever happened to you at all? Oh yeah. Isn't that suck? Over and over again. It's like repeat. Yeah. I, it's happened to me and it's happened to my friends. It's happened to people that I know, not just you and me. And that's why I was like, well, let's make a video because for whatever reason, this happens. Like it's not, it's happening to you probably. That's why you're watching this video uh, this far in. I mean, right? You probably, if you're laying in bed right now, eating like a big, large pizza from Pizza Hut. Popcorn and chocolate. That was my advice. Popcorn and chocolate. Mod, eating your feelings, right? If they're doing that, what would you have to, what would you have to tell someone if they're right now watching Netflix, a marathon? It's not worth it. It's not worth it. Get out of that bed and do something else. It's not worth it. What is that about, right? Yeah. So I actually took some time yeah. in 2014 and Neil Strauss's book is called The Truth, an uncomfortable book about relationships. And it goes into childhood wounds, like how because of the way we were brought up and the way we saw our parents treat us and how we saw them treat each other, we develop these emotional scars, this emotional trauma, that there's, there's three main ideas. There's the wounded child, the child that doesn't want to be abandoned, deep within us, like, please don't leave me, I don't want to be alone, right? And then there's the um, adaptive adolescent. The adaptive adolescent, like, doesn't need anyone. They got it, they don't need anyone. Psst, whatever, dude, I'll do it on my own, right? And then there's a functional adult, and I'm, I've, when the functional adult has healthy boundaries, and they know what they need, they know what they want, and they, ex they express them in a very healthy manner. Even this, I think even this video is in a way our functional adult establishing words. Like, yeah. this is the part of our adultness being like, I know it's part of my adultness, but I mean, how do you feel discussing insecurities? Mm -hmm. It's new for me, but I'm ready to do it. Yeah? Yeah. And so before Becca got here, I thought to myself, because she was here, she was one of our guests. She was my guest uh, about a month ago. Yeah. And her, she, we were talking about the Kilago technique. Maybe we should do round two because I have a great update for that. Yeah. Uh, so she was here and I was like, Becca, I have a great video for us. And she's like, what? What's the concept, Jacob? And I was like, I want me to be the punching bag in theory, the punching bag. Uh, like the pr like a sparring partner for th for the, what you would tell your future guy or or the guy the past guy it doesn't matter because have you ever realized that sometimes we hold back and we don't say what we really want feel and we say something like Becca won't be an example of an insecurity talking versus like what you what the what you should say versus what the insecurity says okay. what's an example let's see um Insecurity is, is why didn't you come home right after work? Or is that something? Yeah, 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 yeah. Like there's a control aspect, yeah, right? Control. Like in other words, so, and can you take us back to a moment where, if you would be so kind to share a situation okay. where it was like, hey, what happened? 
like, and why was your trigger? Because we'll call that a trigger. We'll, we'll refer to that as a trigger. There was a trigger there. Yeah. The person didn't come home at a certain time. Yeah. <laughs> and then that lack of time, of that whatever that was, an expectation. Yeah. Why did that trigger something? What was going on in your head? Um, okay, well, I, I was with a man for a really long time and his routine was very consistent. So um, when he didn't come home when he was supposed to come home, uh -huh. it was one of two things. Either he's hurt or he's with somebody else. And, and how much of that was true? Like, in other words, he had to be hurt or with someone else. Was that true at all? He wasn't hurt. <laughs> so, did he, so in other words, were you wrong or were you right? Would it, was you know, he with somebody to, else? To this day, I, I wouldn't know to this day, but... What do you um, think for real? I think that he was probably with somebody else. So in a way, so, and I'm saying, like, and I, the reason, so thank you for sharing that. I'm going to add one to you and then we'll go delve, delve deeper into the, into the wound. We're going to call this a wound, right? Because that, that insecurity exists within Becca, maybe for good reason. Maybe he made her feel insecure because he, in fact, is cheating on her. What? Well, yeah, in other words, maybe he, in fact, was... Or maybe it's just because I myself have been insecure and for just no good reason, right? Yeah. Maybe 10% maybe good reason, 90% crazy. <laughs> you know what? A lot of the time it makes you feel like the crazy person. Like, like, even though you have every right to feel the way you're feeling, you feel like you're crazy. But you're just like not wanting to listen to your own intuitions. So then your insecurities start coming out. Like, it's pretty crazy. Right. And you know what's, what's really cool about making this video is let's just say... You know, you told me that you dated somebody recently, right. and they were like, "Who's Jacob or whatever, right?" <laughs> and 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 in a way, like it's like, and like that got me to think. That's that's like, but and and I had never made a move on you. I had never been like, "Do you want to make out, Becca?" Or like, <laughs> yeah. if, right? There was never any kind of, never. like this. There was never this come on to you that was yeah. like clearly coming in, and right. and I actually was happy for you that you met somebody, mm -hmm. that you were moving on from the past, right? right. So that's where it got me thinking. I was like, that's, but it's like, I could judge that and be like, oh, that's wrong. But it's like, at the same time, we all have insecurities. So why not just take the opportunity to learn from that situation? Let's go back and, and, and just come out to the surface as adults and be like, come on, dude. You know, one of my former girlfriends, she said, Jacob, I see now that my, I start fights and I get jealous. And recently I'm dating somebody and I went into the bathroom stall to deal with my jealousy because I didn't want to ruin another relationship. And I was very proud of her yeah. because she's trying to cope with, mm -hmm. with her stuff. With, right. We call it stuff. Have you ever heard that referred to that? Like yeah. with our stuff. Dealing with my issues, stuff. Like the, the bag of shit, mm -hmm. all that crap. So, you know, I really wanted to make a video like this because I want to be your punching bag today. And I, but because it's safe, this is a sparring session. Just like there's people that spar for jiu-jitsu for the real fight. I wanted to be your sparring session because when you're in a real relationship where it's like you don't want to get hurt. You're so scared of getting hurt. You're like, please don't fuck up. Like it's you're already so far in that at that point you're probably going to fuck up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, the pressure is on you so much. You know what I mean? Yeah, I get it. And so, I've never done this, and I'm telling you because you're like, is it, it feels very transparent, right? Where it's like, damn, this guy's going there, right? Yeah, that's very open right now. Yeah! Yeah. It's awesome! I love it. Why, where else will we, where, why do we want to be closed? <laughs> like, it's like, where, where does that get you? Nowhere. Right? No. But here it's like spar with me in the sense fit with words like like for example I'm going to go first to give I'm going to give her the first blow. So right now she is the punching bag metaphorically of this future relationship or the past relationship. Either one. You're, I'm going to be the same to you. Okay. Okay? So I'm going to just so you have an example. Okay? Um, hey, can I go? Three, two, one. <laughs> this is funny. <laughs> It's funny. Okay. okay. You know, I hate it when you hang out with guys that just want to fuck you and you're blind to it. You're blind to these guys who want to fuck you. They, 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 they draw photos for you, get you flowers, try to take you on dates, taking you, you know, giving you beer and stuff, take you out for tacos. That's crazy. They want to fuck you. Deal with it. Admit it. Be aware of this, please. Okay. okay. And done. So... My, I'm, I don't know what what happened when I said that. Like, you felt it again. Did you feel it? Yeah. Like, but that wasn't even you. That was it my story. Me. Yeah, I get it. So, but when now, 
what I'm saying is now, you see how I'm being very clear and you know, that, that comes from an insecurity, either real or imagined, right? In this situation I just said, in that relationship, you know, there's guys that, yeah, in my situation it happened to be real. <laughs> like the guy that did this situation, he happened to later profess his undying love to my former girlfriend <laughs> and like, so I've always wanted you. So I was correct. But it's your intuition. yeah, I was it, so it, I'm just saying like this is this is well, this is going somewhere. You see how it's very real, very visceral, right? Yeah. Okay, so now now you, Becca, tell me anything you want. And again, this is not to me. It's just to the past or to the future. I hate that you treated me like shit and you never told me I love you. I hated it, and I wish that I would have, or wish that I would see that. Like I wish that I could have opened my mind to that and realized it when I when it was happening. Oh, was that too deep? No, that was beautiful. Oh, I loved it. <laughs> I loved it because it was so simple and yet so deep. So like, like it was, see how like the insecurity That's and it- the first thing that came to my head. And it, did you ever say that to that person? Never. You see, but isn't oh that- Oh my God! Right? Isn't that the person you should have told that to? Yeah. Right? But in a way, did you, and you see, maybe you acted it out in different ways. Yeah. Even though that insecurity had a voice. Mm-hmm. I hate that I was with you for seven years and not once did you ever tell me you loved me. Hated it. There we go. Very nice. Very nice. Yeah. Very nice. I love it. Like, and I hope that you, <laughs> you, you at home are watching this and or on your phone driving, or maybe you're a passenger to someone. Maybe you're someone's passenger watching this. Maybe you're home crying watching Grey's Anatomy. Who knows what you're doing? <laughs> maybe you're watching pornography on this other on the other screen Jesus. and you watch this too. Who knows what you're doing? Jesus. I'm just letting you know, it's all fine. This is growth, this is where growth happens. This is fun. <laughs> I... It, usually people that watch a little deeper than the first three minutes get rewarded with the real payoff. That's all I'm saying. I hate that I used to try every day to cook dinner for you and make you see that I was worth something and you never saw my worth. I mean, I'm gonna process that with you, cause, cause if you would have told me that, and I was, uh, that would hurt me, right? That would feel something. So I want to feel that with you for a little bit. It's painful. Yeah. Reliving that. Well, I did that for so long, Jacob. But you know what's cool about this? You know what's cool about this video is that it's a cool video you could test later with a boyfriend no. or or somebody or just anyone. Like, why? Why are we so? Guarded. Why are we so guarded that we can't say this shit that I went through? I know, but look, let's say you walk into the next relationship, right? And let's say you repeat the same pattern for not voicing the same concern. What if you cook again and you do it too long and you don't voice your, your true... And I don't think it's just the cooking. Issue. You see the functional adult. Remember, the functional adult establishes their needs and wants. Yeah. Right? So... The functional adult will... In other words, for me, for me, I could easily say now going forward, listen, if you're, if we're in a committed relationship, and a dude wants to eat you out because he wants to bend you over and see your, your butt jiggle on him. And that's what he's thinking about. And that's why he's buying you tacos. And that's why he's buying you tacos and taking you out for beer. I have a problem with that. Of course. Again, but see, to say it, and now she can watch my videos because she'd probably watch my videos <laughs> and be like, oh, the insecurity one, let's see that one. And then you're welcome. And so, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I want to know something. What's that? I made videos of like talking and saying everything to my ex-boyfriend with every intention to email them to him, and I never did. And so, and that was you finally stepping up to the plate. And so, so watch. So there's a wounded child, fear of abandonment. There's adaptive adolescent doesn't need anyone, and then there's a functional adult. May I say what I think that one was, and you tell me. Yeah. I have, you have to get your permission. Thanks. This is going live. Go okay. So. That seems to me like a wounded child. Like you didn't want to be abandoned. You didn't want to lose him. So you didn't oh, want. Oh God, yes, I admit that one hundred percent. You see what I mean? And I had adaptive at adolescent tendencies. Now, part of me also had some a wounded child. We all we kind of are mixed usually, but I was more adaptive adolescent. I'm like eighty percent wounded child. <laughs> I didn't want to admit I needed anyone for a while. Like oh, I could lose anyone in my life, and that was my exterior, you know. And to do, like to have the right balance of vulnerability. Right, because who doesn't? Who really wants to be with someone that will be fine with losing you forever? Like anyone, really? Like that's too cold, right? 
That's, that's the way my ex-boyfriend was. But there's a level of strength that women also like in men, like where they don't, they can't be too needy. So it's it's this happy. Yeah. You see, it's this happy medium, right? Yeah, exactly. So finding that happy medium is where I'm at in life, where I'm cultivating that. And part of this insecurity video is to is to move out of the adaptive adolescent stage in my life. And I'm moving. I've been moving away from it for about two, four years already. I'm just saying that, you know. We can ha be, we can be running these scripts, these little scripts like, hey, like in, think about what you were doing. When I was a teenager, I was listening to rock music. I was, I identified a lot with rock music and that was my way of, like that was how I knew myself, right? And now these days I listen to meditation bells a lot of times or really calm music. And to me that took a level, level of courage to let go of so much music, so much rock music, so much Eminem and be like, I'm, really delving deep into my inner into my inner sanctuary and feeling the resonance of my soul yeah. right so that's so even saying that you know right so, so you watching you might like eminem's rap god or you might like eminem's scene for the moment or maybe you like um the mars volta's progressive music acilos uh, magdalena you might like some really abstract music like that Song. Asilos Magdalena? Yes, you just made me want to add it to my playlist. So you know about Asilos Magdalena? Yes, don't let me forget. Okay, you see, I didn't even, I didn't even know she liked that. You see what I mean? And, 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 and see, and part of my courage was knowing that some people, that I love it, and moving deeper into my evolutionary path and saying, okay, so right now though I need a meditation bells. Right now I need meditation music. And, and that took a level of courage and independence from who I was. See what I'm getting at? That this is what I'm talking about is this, this process, this depth of propelling forward in order to, to really be ready to meet the right person or the right situation and not be this kid that lives in my past. Like, oh, I need to listen to rock to identify with myself. Does this make sense to you? It does make sense. It's basically saying you found yourself. That's what you're basically saying. Is that what I'm saying? Yeah, that's what it sounds like to me is that you found your real self and you're, what you're comfortable in being, so now you're ready to and what about, okay, so where are you at? So, right, let's, do you wanna keep playing the, the punching bag or do you wanna say where you're at? Like, what do you, what, what is, what, what do you feel like you're, do you identify with a part of your past because it makes you feel comfort? In other words, yeah. being, being into meditation just did, was not comfortable for me. Yeah. It was what I felt was needed. Yeah. Make sense? Mm -hmm. Like, my needs and wants, right? Yeah. Is there something you feel you need? Like, you were like, oh, the calendars, you need a calendar. Yeah, organization. Yeah, so is there something that you feel you need to do but you have a comfort an identity tied into, you're vested into an identity in the past. I don't know the answer to this. You could be like, no, Jacob, I'm fine. And you know, I'm, I, I'm, I don't know. There's probably something that I need. I mean, I'm, I'm sure that there's something that I need and want in my life, but I don't know what it is yet. Okay. That's fair. It took me a while to know. So this is Jacob Adams. We may have to cut off this and come back because this, this has a cap on the time. Uh, you want to tell me one more thing before we're out of time? One more. Mm, no. Okay, so let's cut it off here. This is Jacob Adams giving you some ideas. Subscribe, share below, comment. I'd love to hear what your insecurities are.